Speaker, and can I also congratulate you for the stellar shift that you've put in once again today. Uh, I think you must now have the most famous bladder and political history by the time that you spent in that chair. And can I also share your congratulations and thanks to the staff who have been assembled at such short, short notice and who have served us so diligently once again today. And can I thank the Leader of the House, obviously, for his very brief statement on the business for tomorrow. Of course, we all know this is the last place he wanted to be and the last thing that he actually wanted to do. And, and what does he bring to this House? Well, after all this hard work to get this House to sit again, a motion to simply abandon this place all over again. And after getting the courts to reopen this place, he now wants us to agree voluntarily to close it all down again so that they can all swarm off to the conference. As a party that is never, ever covered by the so-called conference uh -huh. recess, and can yeah, I yeah. remind the Leader of the House that the Queen's speech that he had scheduled was the first full day of our conference. Exactly. Can I tell him, you can, with all due respect, you can go and stuff that notion where his <laughs> top hat don't shine. <laughs> and maybe while well, we're at this and we're still thinking about the business for tomorrow, what about one of these opposition days that the Scottish National Party are due, the day and a half that we're still to get on the floor of the House? Maybe that could be done tomorrow. Because tomorrow, what we've got as a main item of business is a Brexiteer whinge fest debate. So can we not instead have a debate about obeying the courts and respecting the rule of law? Mr Speaker, I share what's been said by so many right honourable members and honourable members tonight about the tone of this debate, but I have to say that today was the most undignified diatribe from the Prime Minister, simply unworthy of the House. I've been in this place for 18 years. I have never heard such a poor statement from any sitting Prime Minister. No apology, no contrition, just petulant defiance. The Prime Minister said the Supreme Court was wrong. The Leader of the House is notionally have said there was a constitutional coup. Now, I didn't quite actually hear him deny the fact that he said it. Maybe he'll get another chance again. Just tell the House, did he say this or did he not say this? And if it is a constitutional coup, what does it actually say about the sovereignty that he claims? He has claimed that this place is little more than some sort of tin pot dictatorship. And it was, of course, Mr Speaker, him that led the pro-rogue three the three privy councillors who travelled to Balmoral to ask the Queen to act unlawfully in an attempt to draw the monarch into their half-baked scheme. If he won't apologise for the prorogation of Parliament, will he now apologise to Her Majesty the Queen for attempting to draw her in to the sorry state of affairs? He's simply been the, the least successful, and I'm trying to have measured language, Mr Speaker, the least successful leader of the House probably since the post was created. He has lost every vote in the House. He has lost the government the majority. He can't even get the election the Prime Minister craves. His prorogation was unlawful. He's supposed to be the smartest cookie in the Brexit, the no-deal Brexit cult, cult coup. If that's the best they've got, Mr Speaker, God help the rest of them. Yeah.